I'm Roger with Synthesizers.com and here's a comparison of the Moog 960 sequencer and the Synthesizers.com Q960 sequencer. The Q960 sequencer from Synthesizers.com is modeled after the Moog 960 sequencer that was built back in the 60s and 70s. They're laid out just the same and they operate mostly the same. There's a few different features on the Q960 to make it more playable. The Q960 has a special feature in the mode switch. The fourth unmarked position is the reset position. This resets the sequence back to the first step. We'll drive our envelope generators with the oscillator output and we'll get a melody row. On the Moog, this is not possible. You'll have to skip each step individually to skip those. The Q960 has a gate input and a gate output for each step, just like the Moog does. You can patch these gate outputs back to gate inputs to create short sequences. On the Moog, you can't do this. Another behavioral difference between the Moog 960 and the Synthesizers.com Q960 is how they start. On the Moog 960, when you start the oscillator, it plays the current stage and then shifts. On the Q960, it shifts and then plays. And here's the benefit of that. Let's get a sequence going. And we'll patch an output over here to turn off the oscillator. Now what will happen is our sequence will go, we'll get to this step, and that should turn off our oscillator, which it does. Now when you start the oscillator again, you begin by shifting to the next step and then playing that step. You can skip those steps to start back at zero. Now notice when I start the oscillator, it shifts to the first step, then plays the first step. Now let's try this on the Moog. Okay, now we've stopped. But when I start the oscillator again, it will play this step and then shift. I don't think this is the best behavior. The best behavior is to shift and then play. That works best when you're doing arpeggiations, when the keyboard is turning on and off the sequencer, and in other places.